So I promise to talk about CT perfusion now briefly. So imagine CT perfusion as a race. Um, race with uh, lots of horses and with lots of color hats, right? Or uh, lots of cars with lots of colors on, painted on them. Or uh, dogs with some color leashes or... Uh, um, let me show you how you can imagine CT perfusion the best. So this is what you see here is obviously a swimming race. And just very short, it's just 50 dash uh, freestyle. And they jump, they run on different courses, and uh, they don't arrive there all at once. There will be some difference. Well, someone will be first, someone will be last. Now, for the purpose of uh, this actual CT perfusion, he is the important guy, okay? Not the one who is the first, but the one who is the last. So how do we uh, honor uh, swimmers? We honor them with color coding, right? We give gold medal, we give silver medal, and we go give bronze medal for the first, second, and third, but that's not important because what I told you, we are interested in the last guy. How later the last guy arrives to the um, wall than the first. So let's do the color coding a little bit different. Here is a um, color bar with uh, the number one guy labeled who arrives there first as red, and the last one, the slowest, he's labeled blue. And depending on how slow they get in, they are positioned in this color bar. So here is a CT perfusion scan, and you can see that there are some red colors. The blood arrived there the very first. And then the blue areas here on this right side of the patient, the blood arrived there the last. So now, uh, after I told you all these, and of course then there are... Uh, constructions like the uh, cerebral blood volume, which is more complicated than just which is first, which is last. The previous was the mean transit time. It's really just a race, the mean transit time. This is a little bit more complicated. Um, uh, it is the same actual picture than the previous one. Um, there, are, there is a black hole on the right side, so there is very little blood in that area. Obviously, this is blood volume, and blue is worse, and basically this is zero. There is no blood volume there. Why isn't no blood volume there. It's because it cannot be measured. Maybe there is a, a stenosis. There is a blocked artery without collaterals. It may be recovered uh, if acting early, just like uh, you mentioned. Uh, or there is edema, and the edema is squeezing the blood out of the blood vessels of the capillaries and the veins. Or uh, the brain tissue is already dead, so it doesn't require any blood. That's the worst case scenario. Now, based on what I just told you, uh, what do you think, where is the stroke? Who says it's A, hands up? It's left or is it right? Everyone can see it? So where is the stroke? Is it a left stroke or a right stroke? Now this is a, this is a trick because, and I had to learn it when I go to Palmetto, because the color coding, we choose it. And if the color coding is reversed, which is it? This is a mean transit time, and mean transit time, 15 seconds, it's very slow, and zero is very fast. So wherever it's purple and blue, it's good. Wherever it's red and yellow, it's bad. So don't fool yourself. This is actually a right MCA stroke. Always look at the color bar labeling. So how to measure transit time? We start the stopwatch when the swimmers all jump off. I'm talking about mean transit time. Uh, we stop the sp stopwatch when the first swimmer is, uh, uh, in, uh, hits the wall. But then we have to delay uh, all the time of the swimmers behind the first. And that, that's what we color label. So what mistakes we can do? We cannot, by no means, let me go back. This has to run. We cannot 
start the clock when the last jumps in the pool or the last one starts to run. We can't stop, start the stopwatch when this guy actually takes off. We have to start it when everyone takes off. Uh, how to pick the artery? If we pick that guy as an artery, that's a wrong pick. So we have to pick the correct artery. Now here comes a lot of tricks that I learned while working on CT perfusion scans. Because this can be done automatically or manually. Uh, the latest systems, the artery is picked by the computer. But it can also be picked manually. And then what do I pick? The internal carotid, the MCA, the uh, ACA, or the PCA. Uh, usually computers are pre-programmed to favor ACAs, and that blows my mind. And I tell you why it, why it is. The older machines, and I'm, now I'm talking about the four 16-slice CT machines, were unable to do a perfusion scan on any thicker slab than this. And of course they wanted to get away from the bones, these are bones, so I can't scan the bones. I have to bring the slab above the bones, and this is what I see with the perfusion scan. What arteries are in this slab? Well, the only reasonable artery is the anterior cerebral artery. And this is why, originally, with the very first perfusion scans, uh, companies started to teach that the ACA has to be picked because that's a good artery to pick. But not anymore, because we have uh, scanners that can do 320 or 256 slices. And now our slab thickness is like this. That includes the bones. That includes the carotid bifurcation on both sides. That includes the artery. That includes lots of arteries that previously we were unable to see on the perfusion scan. So we now can select better arteries than just what recommended. So what's the difference? OK, so this is, this is what we see. And these are the arteries what I can select in a particular case. This patient has an occlusion of the uh, right MCA here. What can I pick as an artery? I can pick the basal artery. It's a pretty uh, bad resolution image. The basal artery, I can select the left MCA, the uh, ICA terminalis bifurcation, very good uh, location. I could select the right side, but this is unfortunately occluded, and because of that, it is the actual last swimmer. I don't want to pick the last swimmer who jumps away from the stone, the last. And this is the anterior cerebral artery that the company, I mean, uh, the automatic softwares like to pick up. But the reason for that is that these computers are programmed by engineers and not by us. And they learned from their predecessors that it is the anterior cerebral artery to pick because of the old machines, as I mentioned. It's, it's wrong. I mean, it's not wrong to pick this, but I can show you what's the difference. Uh, the veins are OK. So it's either the torculoherophilia or the transverse sinuses or the sigmoid sinuses. There are plenty of sinuses to pick. Just don't forget if the patient has slow blood flow on one side, let's say, has a right uh, MCA occlusion, then the veins will be slower on that side too, so pick the other side if possible. So this is a normal vessel activity curve. Someone, another uh, institution, told me that there was, a, there was a case where there was a huge delay with CT perfusion. And I said, what's the delay? What, what are you dealing with? And he said, well, we are trying to do these curves nice, and we were told that when the uh, red is much lower than the blue, then it's not good. So we are trying, but we can't. It's not going to happen. I mean, sometimes it does. Sometimes the red is higher than the blue. It doesn't matter. What matters is there should be a red curve, either higher or lower than the blue, nice curve, not double peaks, and the red would be in front of the blue. OK? That's, that's all. Now, there are different variations because I can pick the uh, carotid terminalis bifurcation and then I get very nice arterial peak. Or I can get the uh, ACA and then I get a very poor arterial peak. Now, this is why, we don't, why I don't like to pick the ACA. It's the same patient as you see. It's just a different location of the artery. Or 
intentionally I can pick something that is actually not even an artery, this is the thalamic vein, and still get a red peak and a blue peak, but this kind of overlap, the red is still a little bit in front because blood gets into this vein earlier than in that vein. And now I can also pick like this yellow curve number two. This patient had a PCA occlusion with some uh, collaterals. And you can see if I pick a good artery, then the red peak is in front and higher. And if I pick the wrong artery, a poor selection, then the peak is lower and it's delayed and, and, and not good peak. And how I can make a really bad CT perfusion? That I select something that's not even an artery. I mean, the artery goes like that. It is interesting because I drew an ROI with our machine there, and the computer actually picked one. And this is what the computer picked. And probably the computer thought that this is a peak. But this is actually just brain tissue. There's no artery, there's no blood vessel there. So you can say, no, this doesn't happen in the real world. Oh, absolutely. I guarantee that this happens in the real world, and I see um, arterial and venous curves just like that, when there is no peak, and they actually send it to PACS, and some radiologist even reads it as a normal CT perfusion scan. So now, what is a so-called matching deficit versus the unmatched deficit? Matching deficit is a coded expression of a secret society of neuroradiologists or uh, so, and the meaning is, hey, buddy, it's too late. This guy's red patch is almost the size of the green patch. What patch and patches I'm talking about? These patches, okay? The, uh, the ones that label the infarcted area, the core infarct versus the uh, uh, penumbra. Similarly, the unmatched deficit can be explained by hurry up with intervention. There is still plenty of brain to save because the red patch is small compared to the green area. I have to mark that uh, where there is red, the core infarct, and the green is the penumbra. And there is a rule, the green is always bigger or equal to red. Red cannot, be, cannot get bigger than the green. So these are the summary maps. This is how our Philips machine gives uh, the summary maps. And I just think about it, this is, these are computers. These are not smart things, these are pre-programmed. A computer knows only what is pre-programmed. So this is how it labels red and green, the penumbra and the core in part. Now, I will show you two cases, and we are already beyond, oh my god. So, very quickly. So where is the stroke? This is conventional CT scan, what do you think? Left MCA, right MCA, or there is no stroke? Come on. Who says, who says A? Who says it is a left MCA stroke? Hands up. Nobody. Who says it is a right MCA stroke? Hands up. No one is courageous enough. Who, who thinks there is no stroke? I don't see any red patch. I see only yeah, the green. Do you see, you see green? Well, okay, not stroke, but where, where is the, yeah, my wording is wrong. Where is the occlusion? Right MCA, left MCA, or no, no occlusion? Right. 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 So everyone says it's a right MCA. Okay. Let me give you a little more hint. Right-sided weakness <coughs> and the patient has a right gaze. Dr. I need a note. Uh, it's a seizure. Yes. <laughs> so now left MCA no, right MCA see no. Flow the There's actually no stroke. It's okay? increased flow on the left. So uh, what, uh, what my point is in this case is that the computer is stupid. <laughs> The computer knows only what's pre-programmed. Computer is not programmed to recognize seizure. Right. It is programmed to recognize stroke. Right. And it tries to recognize stroke based on blood flow on one side or the other, and it compares the left and the right side. So when a prominent internist in our institution, after we already did this case, and it's one hour, two hours later, and we decided that this is an, uh, a, seizure. a seizure, and he calls me over the phone and he says, Laszlo, you missed a big stroke on the right MCA territory. I said, what? He said, you missed a stroke. I said, there's no way I missed a stroke. Let me see the case, case again. So I had to explain to this 
very prominent internist of our hospital. But didn't you tell him that a very prominent urologist already saw the case? <laughs> <laughs> the problem was that a very prominent radiologist oh, okay. described it as a stroke, okay? And, too much and I don't want to mention names because we are on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, pitfalls of CT perfusion, and please note that the list may not be complete. complete. Uh, it may overestimate irreversibility of early strokes. So if it says, if, if the stroke is early, then do it. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter that it says it's a black hole, there's no blood flow there, there's no perfusion, it's a coring, all coring for all red. Do it, because early on, the case can be still safe. Inability of detecting brainstem strokes, because those are too small, and uh, because of the bone artifacts of the CT scan. Asymptomatic compensated carotid artery occlusion may show as a stroke, although they are just uh, a chronic occlusion, and it may not need any treatment at all, but it shows as a stroke, because it shows delayed blood flow to one side compared to other. And bilateral symmetric events may not be recognized. And I, I had a very good example for that, I didn't bring it. When, uh, there, are, when there was a right carotid occlusion, uh, critical left carotid stenosis, and only the basal or artery was with the vertebral was okay, and everything was symmetric, and the computer didn't signal anything because it was symmetric. Because the computers are stupid. They are pre-programmed. They don't think. They are zeros and ones. So uh, the benefits of CT perfusion, however, that it finds some M2, M3 occlusions that could be missed elsewhere. It helps to determine if internal carotid artery occlusion is acute or chronic. Helps to rule out large vessel occlusion in some special cases. For example, in basal ganglia infarcts with high NIA stroke scale or chronic carotid occlusion, basal ganglia brainstem for high NIA stroke scale, has to distinguish stroke versus seizure, and we actually actively sometimes using that feature, because we want, we want to see the seizure, we want to prove that it's a seizure, and we can. And when used for patients in coma, or altered mental status, where we, when no one thinks about stroke, and we do the perfusion scan, and suddenly we realize that, oh, the patient has an MC occlusion, by the way. So now, uh, just one example of the benefit of CT perfusion. This is an 87-year-old female, last in normal in the evening, waking up with right arm and leg weakness, right facial droop and slurred speech. Bridgesh, please uh, pay attention. Because oh, this patient had a medical history of uh, irregular heartbeats. And uh, this is the plain CT. Now, Based on the plain CT, and again, I mentioned already that this patient has uh, uh, right-sided weakness, who sees something there that, need, that needs to pay attention to or would prevent you to treat the patient? Would you continue a stroke workup or you would say, this patient is not for intervention, let's not do it? Basically, we don't have enough time, so let me uh, tell you that we went ahead and we did the CT perfusion, and it was very good because we saw a CT perfusion deficit. Can anyone see it? Can everyone see it? Yeah. Because this deficit I'm showing on the screen, I don't know where it is. Ah, okay, I, I have it. The deficit is kind of there, okay, and there. So basically this is a left PCA occlusion, and interestingly the patient didn't have uh, vision problems, didn't have homonym hemianopsia, and why? Because in this area, the patient did have collaterals, but in this area, the more anterior, let's say the P1 slash P2 areas, the patient did not have collaterals. So what did the patient have? Right-sided hemiparesis, and the reason is the uh, posterior talons, okay? I'm not the neurologist here, so I'm not going to... Uh, posterior lumbar internal capsule or midbrain See, that gets I'm, infarcted in yeah, that, PCA. This is B1, why we have neurologists also in the hospital. B1 looks like M1 occlusion clinically many times. Well, what was going on in the cerebellum? Is the cerebellum look, looked like it had an infarct. So you maybe it was actually the pyramids that were also... I'll show you later what you want, okay? Would you, would you have done an MRI? 
I think it would have been helpful to get an MRI of this patient, definitely. Right. Yeah. This isn't the last question. I told you we should have done an MRI first. <laughs> I told you about it. <laughs> so uh, uh, then we did the CTA, and you can see the occlusion of the uh, left. This is left, left PCA there. And then uh, we went ahead, and you can see the occlusion here. And after thrombectomy, the PCA is open. And this is the end result. So now you can see that whatever it was in the cerebellum, I thought that those, those were like two more, maybe two more that I recommended. MRI with and without contrast, because there might be uh, multiple metastatic whatever. No, simply it was uh, also uh, infarct. But the good news is that we removed the clot from the uh, PCA, and as a result, the patient went to rehab with a good prognosis. And she actually uh, did a good uh, recovery despite her age, and she went home, uh, I mean home to uh, nursing home. So, uh, as a summary, whenever we use protocols, we acknowledge that such protocols can be applied to every situation imaginable. There will be always outliers, cases where the protocol provides no help. Nevertheless, protocols are designed to simplify and facilitate cases under their umbrella, so things go faster with the protocols. We make, we make, some, make some mistakes, but everything goes faster. See, the perfusion is not an omnipotent solution for everything under God. But CT perfusion can be performed reliably, quickly, and in many cases provides additional information that helps its users with additional information to lower false negatives and false positives. Thank you very much. <laughs> Questions? So do you really want to replace CT perfusion with body face? No, I just want to play with it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, honestly, there are some cases when we don't want to spend another 50 cc of contrast because the patient has renal uh, insufficiency, non-renal insufficiency. And in those cases, with just one 40 cc of contrast bolus, we can have the poor man's CT perfusion. There are cases that you take directly, <coughs> Andrew, if you see that the MCA sign and is really early and the aspect looks good, you don't even need perfusion or CTA. You know what's going on. Right. Okay, thank you. Thank you all.